Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews, and today we're going to talk about a question that I get asked at least weekly. That is, I bought a quick change tool post from you guys. How do I fit this to my lathe? The answer depends on what type of lathe you own and what type of equipment you have access to, and we'll cover it all in this video. Let's get started. For all sizes of tool posts, it's going to come with a blank block screwed to the bottom. Since every model of lathe needs a differently dimensioned T-nut, that block is meant to be machined into whatever size T-nut that you need. Here's the finished T-nut. As you can see, it screws right on. So how do we get from the blank block to the finished T-nut? You have a couple of options. The first option is the easiest. That's to buy one of our machines that comes with a T-nut that we make right here in our Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania facility. If you buy one of those machines, you can skip the rest of this video because everything that comes after this is something that's already done for you. We don't even use the blank block that comes on the bottom, but rather we machine our T-nuts from bar stock on our CNC mill. And we've been working to bring more production in-house. That certainly helps me since it's easier to walk down the hall and talk to the guy who made the part yesterday rather than contact a factory who made the part a month ago. If we don't stock the T-nut for your lathe and you need to cut the blank into a T-nut, there's a good chance you have access to a manual or CNC milling machine. If that's the case, I won't insult your intelligence with a play-by-play -play of making a T-nut on a mill. Someone once asked a sculptor how he made such vibrant and lifelike statues out of granite. He said, well, it's simple. You start with a big rock and then you take away everything that's not the statue. We're doing that same thing. You start with a blank block and take away everything that's not the T-nut. Preferably, you'd do this with a milling machine, but there are other options if that's not feasible for you. First, we'll need some dimensions. This doesn't need to be high precision, so calipers is just fine. I just measure each individual dimension and write it down on the chart displayed here. Note that the value for A is just the location of the board and tapped hole. On all our lathes, that's going to be right in the middle, but it's worth double checking on your specific machine to make sure there's nothing weird going on with your compound that requires it to be offset one way or the other. I'm intentionally not including any absolute dimensions because unless you have a PM1440 GT like this one that lives in our tool room, your dimensions are going to be completely different from mine. If you have a mill, it's a simple two-step process. Step one, measure the T-slot. Step two, make the T-nut. But if you don't have a mill, things are a little more complicated. Since you're buying a lathe tool post, the one thing I know about you is that you own a lathe. So we'll use a four jaw chuck to get that dimension C or the overall height of the T-nut. I'm using some parallels to bring the face of the part proud of the jaws. And then we just let her rip. I realize my part's not particularly well centered, but you try holding two parallels and tightening the four independent jaws while also keeping everything in frame and keeping your hands out of the way of the camera and center the part. If you can do that, let me know where you buy your gloves since you must have three hands. This is a facing cut, so ultimately radial run out doesn't matter. Yell at me in the comments. For all the outside dimensions of the T-nut, that is dimensions E and F, you can turn the blank on its side and take off however much you need. This is also where you determine dimension A, or the position of the threaded hole. To keep that in the center, just make sure you take off the same amount from opposing sides. This is an interrupted cut for most of the way, so maybe this carbide insert isn't ideal, but we got nice results and didn't break the insert, so I got away with it this time. Now, since we're assumed to not have a milling machine in this example, I'm going to scribe and cut to a line to get our B and D dimensions. I've got the die cam out, and to me this part never gets old. This is what girls must feel like when they paint their nails. Very satisfying. I'll show two different options for scribing our lines. The first is the most common method, marking the dimension with my pocket scale, then scribing along my machinist square. 
I do get to use my fancy scribe that I got off the Snap-on truck. Can you believe this scribe only cost me $2 a week for the rest of my life? The other scribing option is what's now called an odd leg caliper. The antique shop manuals that I have call this tool by a slightly more offensive name, but that's just how you named tools back when everyone had low-level heavy metal poisoning from the leaded gasoline. We made the line, now let's cut to it. You'll notice that I already have one side of the T-nut done. That's because I originally wanted to see how long this took to cut using only a hand file. What I actually did was take 20 minutes to cut the first sixteenth of an inch using the file, then I finished it on the mill as God intended. Did I mention that this whole process is way easier if you have a milling machine? If you don't have one, I know a good honest business staffed by handsome and charming people that will sell you one. And here's the part everyone's waiting for, the payoff. Boom. I said I liked applying the die chem, but finishing off a cut with the hacksaw is even more satisfying than that. You can finish and bring to final dimension with the file. Honestly, I was tired of filing by this time, so I kind of phoned it in here, but you can spend as much time as you want on the final fitment of the T-nut. So there you have it. You can fit your tool post T-nut even if you only have a lathe, hacksaw, and flat file. Even as someone who sells mills for a living, I still respect people using what they have on hand to get the job done. But honestly, it's so much easier with a milling machine. So if you don't have one yet, visit our website and check out our offerings. Until next time, thanks for watching.